at least he came with the new head sculpt to fix the jizz one. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm not going to toy hunt or anything. If you watched my last toy hunt video, I saw the majority of the House of X Marvel Legends wave. And initially I passed up on it. As time progressed, I kept thinking about that wave and decided I was going to go ahead and get the entire wave as soon as I could. If you've seen Shard and Miss Prime's reviews, then you're very familiar with how this goes. But one of the things I enjoy the most out of his reviews is whenever he ranks the figures out of the wave. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to rank the figures out of the wave just by my personal preferences, and then I'm going to mess with the Tri-Sentinel Build-A-Figure. This wave consists of seven different figures. One of the figures does not include the Build-A-Figure part, but you might as well get it while you're at it, right? So to go ahead and get things knocked out and get this thing rolling, I'm going to start with the figures that I don't like. First off, the figure to me that is the worst out of the entire wave is definitely Miss Marvel. Other than the sculpt and the fact that it's a new character, I don't like anything about this. Um, the, the hair that is sculpted in the figure it looks great. There's no diaphragm joint. It's a very stock and basic figure. It, it looks nice on your shelf, but outside of that, there's just no appeal to me. I, I like my 90s Jim Lee style Jean Grey, so I, I don't even have to have this. I just need to be the favorite part. She does at least come with interchangeable hands and... Uh, part of their little island, Karakoa, Kar Karoko. This wave is also based off the House of X and Powers of X comic book that was released. If you haven't gotten a chance to check it out, I highly recommend it. It is one of the best storylines for comics that I've ever read. It captivates you from the get. Whenever you get to, I believe it's issue two, and you start looking at Maria Metagard's background and all these different butterfly effect possibilities, that issue is so good. I'm tempted to just pick up a CGC copy of that specific issue because the story of it is such a good read. So now that Miss Marvel is out of the way, then we're going to go with the next pick of this wave that is trash. So after we've gotten Miss Marvel knocked out, at number six, Cyclops. And it's not to say that this Cyclops is a bad figure because it's not. In fact, this is probably one of the best Cyclops figures that there is. Whenever you start getting into the, all the nice details like the belt, most of the time, Hasbro doesn't even bother to paint these belts, but this one has beautiful detail that's been added into it. The only thing that's missing is possibly a wash, and then you would have a perfectly painted belt. You have these brand new sculpted arms. This Cyclops figure isn't even a bad figure. It's just a preference to the Jim Lee style, but as far as Cyclops figures go, this one is hands down probably the best Cyclops figure that's ever been released by Hasbro. It To me, I, I had... I had the Warlock Wave one, and it just fails in comparison to this one. Granted, you have the Bucky Cap mold, but these newly sculpted arms, granted pinless joints, but the newly sculpted arms and gauntlets just brings a little bit more depth to them, as well as having the bonus effect and the angry face. He comes with a regular relaxed portrait, but you're not going to use it, let's just be real. The only thing that could have really made this better is maybe to have two fisted hands, but that's a quick fix. You can take a fisted hand from anything. And the little weak shoes, they're not boots. I don't know what they are, but they look horrible. Um, you know, initially I was going to sell this figure because I had no intention on keeping it. But the more I look at it in this little pose, the more I'm enjoying it, the more likely I am to actually keep this. I'm, I'm slowly falling in love with this, this figure, and it'll probably actually go number three. If you don't have the Cyclops yet, it's a great Cyclops to start out with until we inevitably get a butterfly joint Jim Lee version. Next in this wave, and it's not fair at all because this figure's already been customized, is going to be the white Magneto. And again, this is this is not fair for me to have on this list because there are hardly any of these parts that are currently on it are from this wave. But you have here stock photo so you have your white suit Magneto, which is comic accurate. This is how he looked in the books. But I just have a preference for the sleeveless look. To me, once I painted him sleeveless, it looked way better. We got rid of the white Spidey UK boots, and I gave him the sculpted boots by Mayshell from the Apocalypse Wave. 
I repainted the Apocalypse Wave sculpt, threw it on there, and got a soft goods cape. This Magneto is number five because the Cyclops is better than that Magneto figure. But because I spent, I took the time to go ahead and customize it and make this one what it is, this one's definitely, you know, it's going to be number one. So it's going to be the Phantom X Professor X. It's just a regular pizza spidey mold with a new head sculpt. The head sculpt is very detailed. I'm surprised with how much detail they actually packed into this head sculpt. Just pick, you can pick this figure up and enjoy it. You don't have to do anything to it. It'll look great on your shelf. The costume is about as comic accurate as it is because it's just black spandex with a helm, a biker helmet. And so, this figure is pretty cool. Dang it. I'm redoing my countdown already. All right, so coming in at number three in this wave is going to be Maria McTaggart. Initially, I started to pass on her altogether. The head sculpt on this figure is actually amazing. It's one of the best head sculpts that Hasbro's put out in a while for a character that's wearing glasses. It's very well done. I'm kind of shocked about it. She comes with a ton of accessories. We're not talking about an alternate portrait or alternate hands. Alternate attire altogether. Arms attached. You can take off the lab coat to make her have a more youthful appearance. Number two for this weave is going to be the Omega Sentinel. This figure is incredible it's sculpted by my shelf so you're already well aware of the value that this figure is going to bring it has an alternate portrait as well as two alternate hands it's great it's a brand new figure and just look at this head sculpt the one that has hair it's detailed like crazy all it needs is a wash and you've got a perfect figure i'm actually so happy to have this figure in my collection like as soon as i saw it on the shelf I went ahead and got it. Whenever Hasbro announced that this wave was coming and it showed the previews of all the figures, this was the one that I knew I was going to get. It'd be the House of X Wolverine. So we've had a ton of Wolverine releases. It's crazy just how many Wolverines we actually have. But this has actually become my favorite Wolverine figure. The sculpt is on the Uncanny X-Force one, which is my favorite Wolverine. Bias. I love that Wolverine. But whenever you start breaking this one down with the new head sculpts and just the color scheme and with the way they've done the claws on this one, this is hands down is one of the best Wolverine figures that they've put out. The reason that it's so high on my list is because it didn't even include a build-a-figure piece. The only thing this thing included was one alternate portrait and I had to get it, which I don't regret. So if you see what this guy on the shelf, definitely pick him up. If all else, just switch out these claws with the Wolverine you already have. You're already ahead of the curve. The House of X Wave, believe it or not, is actually Maria McTaggart. So, as far as an, just a regular figure goes, it's not anything special. This is just a standard female figure, right? But if you look at the value that this figure brings, a ton of accessories. So, naturally, like any other figure, these hands detach. Once you factor in the fact that she comes with two additional arms, you get four hand pieces in this. Two arms, two heads, and accessories. for And a build-a-figure piece. So, for retail of $19.99, you get all of that. No other legend is packed like that, unless it's a deluxe one, which they charge $30 for. So for $20, value, brand new figure, Maria Metaggart is definitely going to take this, and she may even be one of my top 10 legend figures, just for those reasons. Now that we've broken down what figures I think are the best from this wave, we're going to go ahead and put the Build-A-Figure part together. If you haven't had the opportunity to put a Build-A-Figure a build a figure, figure together, you're missing out because it is so satisfying. You get the enjoyment of it. You just got a $60 figure for free just by paying retail of all these other figures. So we're about to put Tri-Sentinel together and get the claws on his. Now prior to filming, because I'd already had the torso taken out from the Omega Sentinel as well as the heads, I had already had this much already assembled. Putting these heads in was a pain in the But we're going to build him and get our first thought impressions. I love the pop. Boop. All right, and we've got the dry set all assembled now. This figure is so much taller than I thought it was going to be. A quick size comparison with Wolverine. 
crazy. That is not... Mattel might want to learn something. This has got some crazy switching. Without question, this is one of the better Marvel Legend Builder figures that Hasbro's ever put out. This is a great start to the year. Now, granted, the next wave we have is going to be the villains. That's going to have some solid figures in it. And I've got that whole wave pre-ordered. I can't wait to tear into it. That Builder figure is trash. I am grateful that I changed my mind on passing on this wave because it's got some stellar material in it. It has some misses. It's not a perfect wave, but for what it has, it's nothing but value. And, like, this is a good action figure. All right, guys, that's going to be it for the video today. We're, just to recap, it is an absolute stellar wave. I highly recommend it, especially if you're new into Legends. You get some amazing figures. I would love to get some feedback and know what you guys thought about this wave. If you have this wave, you know, what figures, how would you rank the figures that are on it? As well as what do you think of the Tri-Sentinel? I initially wanted to skip over this wave because I didn't think it had anything that I really wanted. But I'm so glad that I actually picked it up because it has a ton of great content for you. Especially if you're someone that's just getting into Marvel Legends. This is a great wave to start, especially with your X-Men collection. I would love to know what you guys think. I would like to know what if you ranked out this wave, which ones were your number ones. What do you think of the Tri-Sentinel Build-A-Figure? I love that thing. So I'd love, love to know if you had any problems with it. And also, if you made it this far, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps my channel grow, and it also motivates me to make better or similar content for you guys. I love interacting, and I just want to help. So... Thank you guys. I appreciate you so much for checking this out. Be safe and be great.